Stumbling our way into Concord, still in a daze from watching our cozy pre-war life taken from us, we hope to find really anything that can point us to Sean. We arrive vulnerable and low on firepower, however after we assist the small band of settlers inside the Museum of Freedom, we have gained a full suit of power armor and a minigun, hopefully with a few rounds left from the ensuing battle. After a big sigh of relief from finding not only friends, but a direction to follow the main plot, we realize our power armor has sustained lots of damage and is low on power. So before proceeding deeper into the wastes ahead, or backtracking to join Preston, we must scrounge for every bit of valuable salvage we can. While looting these raiders, we notice a hole in the ground where the Deathclaw emerged from. Cautiously proceeding down, we see a small hall with a blue door at the end, and on the wall we see a sign for the Concord Civic Access. Stepping through the door, we find ourselves in this brick-lined hallway, deep underground. We see that there's really only one way to go, which almost immediately turns into an enclosed office space. Crossing the room, we see a chained off door and a massive hole in the wall. Creeping up, we see what looks like a Mirelurk, but doesn't move. Checking closer, we see its body next to a dead Brahmin. After looting both in this nearby duffel bag, we don't see much other than bones and debris so we can backtrack to the room before. Undoing the chain and continuing through the door, we see another hallway. Most places down here are going to be lined with pipes, so continuing forward, we see a small room off to our left, which takes us to another workspace for the pre-war engineers. In here, we find little other than a novice lock toolbox in the corner. But going just through the doorway here, we see a first aid kit and a vault tech lunchbox on the ground. Turning around, we can proceed further down the hall, and honestly there isn't much to mention as we transition back to brick walls. But moving forward, we hear something. Mole rats attack from the darkness. We see the sewer ahead, and even the holes where the mole rats appeared from. This is a rare but scripted event where the mole rats actually spawn out of these holes once you cross a certain threshold. Slowly moving forward, we see more holes and we spot a Mirelurk in the distance, but it seems to be occupied with something. Taking advantage of the sneak attack. Having such a limited arsenal this early in the game, I'm very thankful to have dog meat along for the ride. Taking a look around, we see a larger room with catwalks and lights all about. Following this exit sign to our right, we turn a corner and find a ladder leading to the commonwealth. Now this hatch is connected to a small cellar door located in this alley. It's just off the main road in Concord. But heading back down, back to where we came from, we can take the catwalk to our right and climb up and around to find an odd sight of a skeleton still gripping a box of sugar bombs and a wooden spoon. Venturing further, we can get a good look around, including discovering what that mire lyric was so busy with. And on the raised ledge just behind that raider corpse, we can make out a chem box, so making a mental note to come back, we'll turn and go the other way for now. Climbing these brick stairs, we get jumped.
I am still confused as to why these rad roaches in particular are significantly tougher than all others found in the game. Passing them for now, we climb more bricks to find another exit sign. This is the third of the three ways in and out of the sewer system. We emerge on the opposite side of Concord from the other hatch. You can see the Museum of Freedom just there. Braving this civic access once again, we need to collect our loot. So back at the roaches, we cross this pipe to another room containing trash and two skeletons. Not much here. We then find the room easily spotted from where we entered, containing a first aid box and a toolbox with a toy alien next to it as well. Not seeing much more from here, we can jump down and move towards that raider. Seeing one final room to our left, we can go ahead and check it out. We enter a small room, again completely filled with pipes, and on one wall we find the end of dungeon steamer trunk down here. Turning around we can see a mattress for our survival playthroughs, and just to that we can see a shelf with a bunch of containers for us to loot. Now before you leave, be sure to snag issue number 10 of Taboo Tattoos sitting on the ground next to the steamer trunk. With all that, we can finally move forward to loot the raider. And just around this corner, we barely spot the Fusion Core and Vault Tech lunchbox hiding behind this pipe. And after grabbing those, we can find a way to this chem box. After making use of these cinder blocks to hop up, we can see the cap stash above the two jet on the ground, and a day tripper guarded by this innocuous looking teddy bear. With everything looted and all enemies dead, we can look around for anything we missed. Turning off our pit boy, we notice light coming from these holes in the wall. And since there's no way above, we can go around and under this pipe to reveal a crumbling room with no more than a single wood crate to unlock. With this door stuck shut, we can admire some of these effects coming out of the wall. With absolutely everything explored and taking our last look around at the eerie environment, we can finally make our way to an exit. Now this adventure, even though we are nudged towards it by the story, took me several years to finally experience on my own. I must say I enjoy slowing down to look for these secrets and revisiting places I once thought boring or lacking of detail or attention. I often find those places have the best secrets. Now from a lore perspective, this place might be a bit lacking, but I still would recommend passing through on every playthrough if not just for the fusion core and chems that you find along the way. And with that concludes our look at the Concord City Access. I am now posting multiple videos a week, so if you like what I do and would like to see more, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. But most of all, I just want to thank you so much for being here with me today. Until next time.